Flying is nerve-wracking. You have to figure out the time to get to the airport, if you pack to the right size containers for TSA, if you'll end up in the middle seat, if your flight will be delayed. And then you get off the plane and you're just exhausted after potentially six hours of doing straight nothing but watching movies. But you know what's really even more nerve-wracking about flying? It's environmental cost. Hi everyone, welcome back and welcome to my channel. My name is Sarah and I talk about environmental sustainability and slow living here on this channel. And today we're going to be talking about the environmental cost that flying has. Today, flying counts for about 2-5% to of the global greenhouse gas total emissions. And while this doesn't seem that big of a piece of the pie, there are two reasons why you really should care about the environmental impact that flying has. The first of which is the rate of increasing travel. So airlines estimate the amount of air travel will grow by an average of just under 5% per year up to 2034, which means it could have consumed 12% of the world carbon budget for the 1.5 degrees Celsius by 2050. And while most industries are decreasing the amount of greenhouse gases that they're putting into the atmosphere, flying it's not possible because biofuels are not caught up with technology or technological advances to replace fossil fuels. The second reason that you should care about your flight's environmental impact is that for those people who fly, which is only about 5% of the world's population who has ever flown, flying can be the biggest piece of the pie for your personal carbon output. For myself, I actually put 7.4 tons of carbon into the atmosphere by flying this year. And just throwing that number out is hard because there's no reference points. So to give you some examples, not driving a car, I've saved 2.4 tons. And eating a plant-based diet, I've saved 0.8 tons. And these are really estimates because it's really hard to calculate uh, the true environmental impact and greenhouse gas emissions per person because it's lots of variables. It was really uh, eye-opener for me when I realized that all the environmental personal choices I've made are negated by the flights that I've taken this year. And for reference to uh, the average population, the average American uses about 19 tons of carbon per year and the average European about 10. So because of this huge portion of our carbon personal impact, there are a lot of opinions and stances out there. One of which is from Jack Miles, who is a reporter with the Washington Post. He says that we should take a deep, slow breath and throw away that bucket list for good. You are needed at home, my friend, urgently needed. For the love of earth and of those who will inherit it, when you are gone, stay right where you are. Yikes. So instead of quitting travel, are there ways that we can really negate our flight's impact? And the answer to that is y yes, kind of, kind of, asterisks with the asterisks. But the first option for this is carbon offsets. And it's probably something, it's a word that you've probably heard, maybe you've seen it when you're booking your flight and it says, do you want to offset your flight? Well, here I am telling you, should you? Should you offset your flight? Okay, so I did a lot of research on this and I felt that there were a lot of scientific jargon that I didn't really understand, but I got some key takeaways and I think I have an opinion for you guys. First, what are carbon offsets? Carbon offsets are where we pay to have the carbon dioxide emissions from flying sequestered in another form, usually through tree planting. How this really works is that you go on a carbon offsetting website and you put your flight info in and it tells you the amount of money that will take to donate to projects who will sequester the carbon that you've outputted through your flight. So there are a couple main opinions that I've found out there, and the first is the most extreme, which is by Kevin Anderson, who's a climate scientist, and he says, Offsetting is worse than doing nothing. It is without scientific legitimacy, is dangerously misleading, and almost certainly contributes to a net increase in the absolute rate of global emissions growth. So Kevin's opinion is from 2012, which is a little dated to talk about because there's been a lot of advances in the uh, regulations of carbon offsetting so we kind of have to take his opinion with a little bit of grain of salt. But basically Kevin's main idea is that 
while you can calculate the physical amount of carbon that is sequestered, it's impossible to know the social implications. So because someone can offset their flight, will they take more flights, which in thus will give more harm down the road? The most common opinion that I found is that groups say that carbon offsetting should be the last resort. One of these groups is called Atmosphere, which is a German carbon offsetting group. Atmosphere says that we should really only offset the things that we can't avoid, like air travel because there are no viable solutions to flying without fossil fuels. Things that you shouldn't offset according to them are driving because there are versions of driving that don't use fossil fuels such as electric cars or using public transport. And also you can't offset a steakhouse because in itself it's counterintuitive to climate change. Their slogan at Atmosphere is to first avoid, then reduce, and only then offset. So if you're really thinking about offsetting, which companies should you offset which? I would really like to know. There is there's a lot of really confusing information on who the best source to offset with is because a lot of them are private companies who are making a profit off of the offsetting. So my question was why would I donate to a third party who's going to donate to a grassroots movement in environmental sustainability when I could just donate to the group who's doing the offsetting? I don't really understand. And I think one of the reasons might be that you can get a more impact through the money that they donate and maybe it's multiplied. I think the best options right now that I figured out were donate through Atmosphere, which has really a great site and I really recommend it that you research more into them, or just donate to a grassroots local environmental movement. And you can use Charity Navigator, which is a great site to see where exactly money is going through certain charities. For the final word on carbon offsets, we're gonna give it to Dr. Cochen, who is a Yale professor in forestry. And he says that his own view is that purchasing carbon offsets is better than nothing, assuming that you are careful about where you buy them. Yet when considering ways to reduce your own carbon footprint, you should compare offsetting to the more certain alternative of directly reducing your own emissions. So the second way that you can mitigate the effect of your flight is really to support groups who are doing work in this field where you might not have the most information and they do. A group that comes up is called A Free Ride, which is a UK-based organization. And their mission statement is that as a society, what we value from flying is occasional holidays to explore the world. With this proposal, we can protect those things while focusing efforts to reduce flying on the passenger group that is causing the lion's share of the problem, the frequent flyers. Their basic premise and model is that one flight a year per person should be tax-free and otherwise there should be a environmental tax added on to flights. For them, it makes much more sense to tax the people who are using flying the most frequently. Frequent flyers. Duh. So the third thing that you can do to really decrease the carbon impact of your flight is said best by Roger Tires, an environmental sociologist from the news source The Conversation. And he says that if citizens remain blissfully unaware of aviation emissions, then airlines and governments are unlikely to do anything about them. And now we get back to talking about travel as a right versus travel as a privilege. No answers on that one yet. Uh, so that's a lot of information to throw at you and if you're really still watching this, I hope that you learned something and that my kind of just taking other sources and putting it into one video is helpful because I don't know any of this information. I'm not a climate scientist, but I think that gathering all this and putting it together for you guys is what I'm here for. My personal opinion and what I'm gonna be doing going forward is first just taking more local trips and really reducing the amount that I travel. So this for me would look like only taking one long haul flight per year and when I do go someplace staying a lot longer than I usually would. Second, I'll be contacting my representatives as I do all the time and just telling them that airlines should be held accountable and potentially we should put a carbon tax 
in the US like they're trying to do in the UK. And the third thing that I'll be doing is donating to local environmental groups until I can figure out more of why you should go through the middleman of carbon offsetting. But the more I read, the more my views I'm pretty sure are going to change on this, so I'll make sure to keep you guys updated on all of that. What are your thoughts on this? Leave those in the comments down below and I'd love to have a conversation with you. If you'd like to support me in exposing the travel industry and talking more about sustainability and slow living, go ahead and click that subscribe button and click the notification bell to get emails every Monday when I put out a new video. Again, thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day. How many times can I say the word sustainability wrong on a sustainability channel? The world may never know. Okay, sidebar. I am traveling to Honduras on Thursday and I really don't want it to seem like I talked about all this thing about like, oh, flying is bad and then I get on a plane like a hypocrite and I've explained this, but travel is something that I really value and finding a way to make it sustainable is, is hopefully something we can do because I really think that there's a valid social implication of travel and I think we just need to be more aware of our impact. So I really hope that I don't come off as a hypocrite in these videos and if I do, please call me out and I don't know, but changes are coming so yeah, that that's that's where I'm ending this.